Hi friends, hope you are all doing fine and enjoying the lockdown period. So stay safe at home, don't come out. And uh, let's uh, have a small clause on clause on Ascom Mycotina, the subdivision Ascom Mycotina. We have been learning mycology for a quite while, and we have already completed two groups, that is uh, uh, subdivision Zygom Mycotina and subdivision Mastigom Mycotina. Today I am going to tell you something about subdivision Ascom Mycotina. And uh, Ascomycotina, it's a group of fungi which is commonly called a sac fungi, owing to the fact that they are sexual spores called as ascospores. They are formed within small sac like structures called as acid. And uh, you all know that uh, this group includes yeasts, uh, but it also includes other fungi like powdery mildews, uh, cup fungi, morals, truffles, blue molds, pink molds, etc. And regarding the general characters, uh, the mycelium, it is septate and well branched. The motile cells, uh, the moving cells, they are all together absent in any stage of the life cycle. We know that the uh, motile structures, they are seen only in lower groups of fungi and this is a higher class of fungi. So you, you should not see any uh, motile cells in this group. And the asexual reproduction, it takes place by means of conidia or conidia spores. The sexual spores are called as ascospores, which are produced inside acai. And each ascus, it normally contains eight ascospores, but there are cases, uh, as in the case of uh, yeast, uh, where each ascus contains only four ascospores. And the acai, they are confined inside sterile tissues to form complex uh, fruiting bodies uh, called as ascocarps, which may be of different shapes that we'll discuss later. And the most important fact is that. Uh, the dicaryotic phase is seen. The dicaryotic phase means uh, there are two nuclei which lie side by side without fusion. And the most in interesting thing about this uh, group is the formation of ascus. Uh, now for the sexual reproduction you know that uh, the sex organs are required. Here the male sex organ is called as anthridia and the female sex organ is called as the ascogonium. Now, the, both the antheridia and the archegonia, the uh, uh, ascogonia, they contain several haploid nuclei and uh, the ascogonium, that is the female reproductive structure, it carries an narrow receptive organ called as the trichogyne and uh, during fertilization, the antheridium, uh, which when comes close to the ascogonium and uh, it touches the trichogyne, uh, the contact wall dissolves and the multinucleate protoplast of the anthridium it flows into the ascogonium through the trichogon. Now, the plasmogamy and the close pairing between the male and female nuclei occurs, but uh, the karyogamy is delayed. So, this results in the formation of uh, several dicaryons, and uh, from this dicaryotized ascogonium, uh, which is the female reproductive structure that contains now several. Uh, pairs of male and female nuclei, uh, septate, non-septate uh, protuberances that means projections are given out and these projections they result in the formation of ascogenous hyphae. Now into these ascogenous hyphae the dicaryons that is a male and female uh, hyphae which uh, male and female nuclei which are not fused uh, they migrate and uh, the ascogenous hyphae later become septate. So that each cell in the ascogenous hyphae now contains a dicaryon. So usually the ultimate or the penultimate cell, that means the terminal or the subterminal cell of each hypha, it develops into the ascus. In higher fungi, it is uh, actually the penultimate cell or the subterminal cell that results in the formation of the ascus. Now during the ascus formation, the tip of each ascogenous hyphae, it recurves to form a hook-like structure which is called as the crozier. Uh, the two nuclei of the crozier cell, um, that means the dicaryon, uh, the two nuclei of the crozier cell, they undergo mitosis to form four nuclei. So that means in this uh, crozier cell or the curved cell, now there are four haploid nuclei. The wall formation takes place in such a way that there is a terminal cell which is uninucleate and there is a basal cell which is uninucleate and the median cell that is a subterminal cell it is binucleate now the binucleate subterminal cell it is called as the arch cell or the hooks uh, or the crook cell 
alt cell or the crook cell which acts as the ascus mother cell now the two nuclei within this uh, ascus mother cell or the alt cell or the crook cell they now fuse to produce the syncarion now the ascus mother cell it enlarges to form an ascus and its diploid nucleus undergo uh, meiosis uh, followed by a me followed by a mitosis that means first a meiosis takes place resulting in the formation of four nuclei and second a mitosis takes place resulting in the formation of eight nuclei now all these eight nuclei they gather cytoplasm and turn into ascospores so uh, like this uh, several assay are produced and all these assay they let later, uh, later get covered by a sterile tissue to form the complex protein structure called as the ascocarp now this ascocarp can be of different shapes it can be of a spherical shape in which case it is called as a uh, cleistothecium it may be a flask shaped structure in that case it is called as a perithecium or it may be a cup shaped or a saucer shaped body which is called as a apothecium so these are the three different types of uh, 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 ascocarps found in ascomycetes or the subdivision ascomycotina so i am going to show you the pictures of how this actually takes place so i hope you can see that right so uh, this is the this is the this structure it is the ascogonium and this is the anthradium and you can see that the ascogonium as well as the anthradium they contain several haploid free nuclei and uh, this structure of ascogonium uh, this narrow structure is called as the trichogonium trichogyne the tip of the trichogyne and the anthradium they fuse together uh, they the cell wall fuses and uh, so what happens is the contents of the anthradium they will now flow into the ascogonium so they pair they form pairs of male and female nuclei called as dicaryons and from them several ascogenous hyphae are produced and uh, this is the structure of ascogenous hyphae you can see that all these cells the septate ascogenous hyphae all these cells they are binucleate the two nuclei are lying side by side without fusion and the tip of each ascogenous hyphae now curves so you can see that now it curves to form a crozier cell and uh, the crozier cell the two nuclei divide by mitosis so all together there are four nuclei so the cell wall formation occurs in such a way that there is a terminal uninucleate cell there is a basal uninucleate cell and there is a median binucleate cell which is called as the crook cell arch cell or the ascus mother cell so this ascus mother cell is the one which later gives rise to the ascus now inside this ascus uh, mother cell the two nuclei have now fused to form a syncarion which is now going to undergo meiosis so this is the first meiosis resulting in two nuclei second meiosis resulting in the four nuclei so by meiosis four nuclei have produced each of these nuclei will now divide by mitosis forming eight nuclei haploid nuclei all together so these haploid nuclei will now gather cytoplasm and form ascospores all these eight ascospores you can see they are arranged in an oblique fashion they are arranged in an oblique fashion and this is how the ascus formation takes place so i hope uh, the general characters and the ascus formation of the subdiv subdivision ascomycotina is clear now so the type that we have to study for this subdivision is cilaria that we will be taking up next thank you